All right, uh, I'd like to take now the time to introduce Diane Siefkes with DK Solutions. Uh, Diane, uh, we've known her for a long time. A lot of fun to be around. If, you're, if you've had the opportunity to meet her in person, she's got lots of energy and lots of good ideas. So uh, that's what we're hoping she'll share today. And Diane, please take it away. Well, thank you. Thanks, Steve. I always enjoy this kind of stuff because, again, anybody who knows me knows I can talk. So this is always good for me. Um, I came back so briefly. I've been doing marketing, mostly social media marketing, since 2012 and switched just last year to do more content-based on the book Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. This is up for grabs today, so I'm going to ask Brooke to write down everybody's name and then draw a name at the end and they'll get the book. Is that okay? Normally we do like business cards, but you know, that just gets too complicated. So I'm gonna, Brooke is of course going to be, you know, above board with this. So you'll get a book of this. You'll get this book, somebody will. And so I do content writing as uh, Chris and I were kind of chatting about but I still do a lot of marketing in general. And so rather than hearing my boring story about, oh, when I was five and oh, this is what I do, I wanted to open this up to everybody to ask, ask Diane, do you have any marketing questions? Website, social media, working on your business plan, what do I do for demographics? What does demographics mean, Diane? What are the three things I need on a website, Diane? That's what I'd like to open it up to. Does anybody have any questions, specific questions for me? I do have notes, so I'm ready to, you know, just yak, but I would prefer to answer your questions if you have any. No questions. Well, I'll, I'll go with a question, Diane. I, I like how you kind of let, let us out there. What are the three things that you need on a website? Just as a refresher, you know, some people know, some people, you know, focus well, on your core competency. That's, thank you, Clint. That was a nice segue and I appreciate you picking up the ball there for me. So story brand is based on seven pieces of a good story. So in this, what a good website needs, they need to answer three questions. And you have to answer the three questions before anybody scrolls down. So it's gotta be on your header. Third, first question is, what do you offer? What are your services? Accountant, cat psychotherapy, books, publishing, leadership development, content marketing, lighting for businesses, Gary does design, Graham does cultural, I'm gonna say cultural consultation. Uh, Greg is gonna be working with SCORE. So Stacy actually does a very good job of telling everybody, but that's the first question. Clearly, easily, simply tell me, the customer, the visitor to your website, what it is that you offer. What's your business product or solution? Second thing you need to tell me is, how does it make me, my life, better? How are you going to make my life better? So like Doug and I, we've kind of had a conversation a couple of times, and I know Doug says to his customers, I make your life better because A, your lighting will be better, B, you're going to save money on your lighting bills. And C, you're going to get money from LES to do these changes so you don't have to pay a lot of money out of the pocket in the first place. Those would be the, th that, uh, oh, great. He's going to make my life better. So Clint, you're an accountant, bookkeeper. You, I'm a small business owner. You're going to make my life better and easier because now I don't have to worry about the books. I'm an English major. I think I know what two plus two is and I barely get that right most of the time. So you're gonna make my life easier because you're gonna take away the worry that I have. I'm not gonna stress about you know all the money that I, I'm making and where does it go and oh my God, who's tracking all that? That's how you make my life better. Allison, you're gonna make my life better because my cat's peeing all over everything I own and you're gonna help me figure out why and how do I stop it. And when I stop it, I'm not gonna be so upset with this poor cat because there's something going on, right? So that's what you have to think of. How do you make your customer's life better? So first question is, what do I offer? Second question is, how do I make my customer's life better? And then the third customer, the third question, and this is what a lot of people don't do, 
you have to clearly and easily tell me as your visitor, your website visitor, what do I need to do to buy it? It's called the call to action. CTA is what it's kind of, what is your clear call to action? My clear call to action is schedule a meeting. I want you to fill out a form and schedule a meeting with me. So you and I can sit down and have a conversation about what your needs are, what your product is, what are your marketing issues? So John, you're going to say, schedule a meeting and we're going to, you're going to talk to your potential person about, well, what is he, what are your goals? Uh, no, this great. This is your problem. This is how I solve your problem. Doug, you're probably going to, you're either going to say schedule a meeting or maybe get a quote. It might be as simple as that. Oh my gosh, I know, right? So you have to really sit down and figure out what it is. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to buy now? Then buy now. So if you've got a book, Lori, that you're looking to sell, buy this book now. That would be a clear call to action. So it really depends on what you specifically want your customer, potential customer to do. Remember, on a website, you have approximately 10 seconds. 10, count that, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, count, do it. And you'll be amazed if you answer those three questions right away at the header, what do I offer? How does it make my customer's life better? And what do they need to do to buy it? Your website will convert more business. And it's really as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So Clint, again, I thank you for picking up on my segue. That was my first question. Who else has a question? I do. Yay. Story brand. You know, uh, it, it's almost I have dreams about it every night now. But uh, oh, yeah, the beginning, the end, the players, the antagonists, and all the, I do pick up, I actually do listen to it. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. But I have the question would be, I'm trying to put it all together as far as problem solving. I think and becoming that trusted advisor, how does that relate to the story brand story? If that even makes sense. Yes, I think so. Here's the thing. And it's very interesting because storytelling is big right now in marketing, right, Chris? It's very big. Oh, tell your story. But here's the reality, and I say this very bluntly, and I say it with love, nobody cares about your story. <coughs> what we care about as individuals is how you help me solve a problem. That's what story brand does. It's not story is in tell a story. Story brand tries to clearly, seven elements. <laughs> See, I don't do math. I went seven, and then I went like this. So you know I don't do math. So that's seven seven elements to a story according and Don Miller has done the research and so I work with people to figure out what those seven elements are most important being what is the problem what is the one problem your customer has that's it how do you solve that you are the guide or trusted advisor how do you as the guide come alongside them and help them that is what story brand is based on so story brand is really, in a nutshell, I tell everybody I talk to, I said, there's three things you have to think of. What's the problem? What's your solution? And what's success look like? What's your problem? What's the customer's problem? Customer has bad lighting. They're not up to code. They're whatever they're, you know what their problem is, right, Doug? What's the solution? Solution is lighting from Civic Lighting. What's the resolution? So resolution becomes what does success look like? Success looks like they're saving money on their electric bill every month. Success looks like they got money from LAS to do it in the first place. Success looks like they don't have to worry about this for 10 more years. So these are successes and you have to show all three of those because most people aren't going to really take the time to figure out what it is you're trying to sell them. You have to clearly say them. In story brand, what we always say is clarity trumps cute or clever. Okay, Does that answer your question, Doug? Uh, threefold. I, I think you were an English teacher. Uh, I'm an English major. I like to right. teach, so I, I tend to try to, you know, give more than I receive. Is that's why we relate? Because I'm terrible with math too. Six. Yeah, oh no, that's seven. seven. Oh wait, no, that's not right. I don't know what that is. All right. Any other questions? Diane, uh, this is Steve. Um, yeah. One thing I wanted to remind everybody: if you have, if if 
uh, Diane is talking and you a question pops into your mind, just enter it into the group chat and I'll make sure that I draw Diane's attention to that. So uh, if you don't want to verbalize your question, go ahead and put it in the group chat and we'll do it that way. And I do have a question for Diane. Uh, Diane, I visited a small business website recently where I searched every single page and I could find no way to con contact this company. No email address, no phone number, nothing. Um, how important is it to provide multiple communication options to people to reach you? Oh, Steve, okay, so yes. Part of that becomes the clear call to action. Clear call to action would be, you know, buy now, contact us. But you have to be careful with passive. Contact us is a very passive. You want it to be very active. Schedule a meeting, buy now, that's very active. I actually always recommend to my clients, one of the things across the top, the header of your website should be, your logo is always top, what am I, right? Top left, because when you're looking at a computer, and then top right should contain, at a minimum, a phone number, an email address, a physical address if you've got one. You know, if you're not working from home, I always hesitate to tell people, don't put your home address on there because there's still wackos out there. Um, but put something up there, an email or a phone number. Because a lot of times people are looking, they're like, oh, I'm going to go to Seabeck Lighting to purchase a thing. I, you know, I don't know why they just randomly pull up to your shop, Doug, but I'm going to use you because I know you have a physical building. So I'm just looking for your address. I don't need to call you. I'm just going to pick something up. I go to your website and as Steve said, I can't find an address. I can't find anything, so I'm frustrated. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go to another store. I'm gonna go find it somewhere else. So yes, it's very important. I always recommend it should be top right-hand corner. And there's room for it depending on how you set up your website. And I would also say that you have a contact us page and on your contact us page, you could have that information as well. Also should be in what we call the junk drawer, which is the very bottom of your website, all the stuff that doesn't necessarily have to be front and center. Does that answer your question, Steve? Yes, very well, thank you. Bye, Doug. Tell everyone I said hi. Um, Thanks again. So let's see, so we talked about the website questions. Um, let's talk just a little bit in marketing in general. So marketing in general should identify your customer's problem. So when you're writing a business plan, a marketing plan, one of the first questions you want to ask yourself, and I will say this a lot about all marketing. If you don't know what your customer's problem is, you can't clearly tell a person why they should hire you. How do you solve their problem? That's it's, it's it in a nutshell. With StoryBrand, it's problem, solution, success. Problem, solution, success. If you get nothing else, think of the problem, identify your solution, obviously, and what does success look like? How are you helping your business, your customers thrive and survive? So identify your customer's problem, explain clearly, simply, and easily how your product or service helps them. This isn't rocket science. And if I tell you websites should be based at a fourth grade reading level, that should give you an indication. And it's fourth grade reading level, not because people are stupid. People are not stupid. People have way too much stuff going on in their head. What I've got to worry about, oh, I got dogs and cats and kids and work and now I'm pandemic and then there's protest and then there's, oh my, is it going to rain and can I go to the pool today? I have all of this other stuff going on in my head. I am not going to take that brain energy and I'm not going to use it to read your stuff. So you have to be very clear on what that is. And then simply describe a successful ending. What does success look like? In StoryBrand, we call that an aspirational identity. Who does your customer aspire to be? So what do they want to be when they're done working with you? They want to be, depending on what your business is, they want to be a successful business owner. That's why I hire an accountant, because I want to be a successful business owner. You know, Chris works with, and I wrote it down, audio visual, they want to be successful businesses. 
Allison, I want to have a cat that I don't want to kill every time it pees on my, you know, my bed. Whatever it is, I have to be able to clearly identify it. So problem, solution, success. Um, and I think we're going to let Gary back in. And, and there are several uh, questions out there in the chat for you, Diane. Okay. So Clint, how do you keep ahead of the decline in marketing? Do you reinvent yourself as far as rewriting a business plan? Ooh, good question, Clint. Um, so are you saying, so let me just clarify, how do you keep ahead of the decline in marketing? So are you talking of that your marketing isn't working like it used to work? Yes, that's correct. Okay. It's like, you know, the marketing model, you, those people that have the cash cow product or whatever, and I guess it's, it's derived at industry specific. So yeah. Yes. Okay. And then how, do you reinvent yourself as far as rewriting a business plan? I'm not a big fan of reinventing anything. I'm not a big fan of rebranding. I'm not a big fan of, you know, it ain't broke. Don't fix it. You've had some success with your business. Obviously you're still in business. So how do we look at that? One of the things I always ask my clients to do, especially if they've been in business and have a client list, look at all your past clients, pick five to seven of your favorite and they can be your favorite for whatever reason. You just like working with them. They're fun to hang out with. They're whatever, they, they consistently and regularly buy. They pay on time. Whatever your, whatever your reasoning is, look at those five to seven people because I think what sometimes happens, we lose the focus for our marketing. So we need to really narrow in on those five to seven past clients so we're talking to those past clients. If we're talking to those people, we'll get more people just like them in our future marketing. So I wouldn't say reinvent. I'd say take a really hard look at your marketing. What are you doing currently? I see you, Chris. Give me a second. Um, so I would say that you really need to look at what you're doing currently. So a lot of people say, oh, I have to have a Facebook page. Diane, help me build a Facebook page. And I always go, who's your client? Who's your market? Are they on Facebook? I don't know. Well, until you know for sure. Oh, but it's free. Okay. So let me just debunk that myth right now. Facebook is not free. It's free to set up a Facebook business page. Yes. But the way they've set the algorithm now, super secret Facebook algorithm, you are not going to make any money on that Facebook page until you pay them for it, which means you're paying. Second of all, what's your time worth? Could you be better spent your time better spent working with clients and actually getting paid for that work? Or would your time be better spent trying to come up with a minimum of three posts a week, a minimum of three posts a week to really get traction on Facebook. You've got to be posting five to seven times a week. Who's got time for that? I don't even do that. Right? So that's what I would say. So Chris, go ahead. You had, you had a comment. Just a, a thought, Diane. Um, but to the idea that, that uh, marketing is in decline, I would suggest that instead it's actually just becoming much bigger and more complex. Um, and whereas in the past we had a limited number of ways to reach our customers and our prospects, now it's expanded like crazy. Yes, you can still do traditional advertising, but you also can use social media. You can use email campaigns. Of course, you want your website out there. And to your thought, Diane, that, that you should look back at those five to seven uh, um, clients um, and figure out who they are, you need to figure out what they are reading, what they are watching, so that you know how to reach those clients and then where are your prospects right so what are they looking at so to finish that if you're looking at those five to seven you ask yourself gender race age income job car they drive social media sites they visit are they reading a newspaper are they on facebook twitter or instagram you know, these are all questions. So I actually tell people, create a spreadsheet, put those seven names across the one side and put all of this information. It's called, I call it friendly stalking because it's friendly because you have no ill intent, 
but you do want to learn as much about them as you can because the more focused on those then you'll know, yep, Facebook is where I need to be. Oh, no, Facebook's not going to work. I actually have to put out a traditional ad. That's what your marketing is going to need to do. So uh, did that answer your question? Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I got to get my glasses here. Let's see. So do you, if you have multiple types of customers, how can you address that with your website? So this is interesting. So Donald Miller does a daily video and it's called Business Made Simple Daily Videos. And I would highly suggest they're two to three minute videos, hugely impactful. I would suggest you can Google Donald Miller Business Made Simple Daily Videos. They're great. So this morning he actually kind of talked about this or was it yesterday morning? I don't know. I, it's one of the things, that, one of the only videos that I watch, I'm not a big video fan, but I watch his videos. He actually said this morning, you have to figure out Where's your money coming from? What product, one product, one service where you make most of your money? What is the one product or service that you do that makes more of your, most of your money? So Clint, uh, you've got bookkeeping and you've got tax accounting, right? You do taxes and you do bookkeeping. Yes. That would be for me. And this is just an example. I work with an accountant, so I'm a little familiar with what their, what your struggles are. So I, they make more money with taxes. It's just, this, this short and you know, it's just what they do. So a lot of their website to begin with is about taxes because that's where their Don Miller cash cow, whatever you want to call it. That's what their website focuses on. They'd ideally like to get more bookkeeping clients because oh gosh, taxing tax season sucks, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's feast or famine. They make a ton of money, but they can't move for six months afterwards because they're exhausted. So, so, you know, they're fig we're, they're, we're figuring that out. We're switching to more bookkeeping type of words. So you have to figure out what's the product or service that you're, that is, and again, to put it bluntly, where, where are you making most of your money? Where's most of your money coming in? That should be one of the first things people see when they come to your website. One of the first things they see in your email and something that Chris said, you know what? Website is foundational. You have to have a website. If you don't have a website, you don't exist. Plain and simple. Because people Google things. And Facebook is fine, but it's not going to be enough. At one time, Facebook didn't even show up when you Googled. They've changed the algorithm so it shows up, but it's still not the same as a website. Website is foundational. I actually suggest to people you should do email marketing before you do social media. So social media. So this is, this is a post I created. It's ugly because it's plain, but this is an example of a post I created for Facebook. I put it out on Facebook. I have no control over who sees that post. None. Facebook decides who sees that post. I can't control that. I do the same thing, same information, same post, if you will. And I deliver that via email to my client list. They all get it. I know they get it because it comes direct to their email box. Even if they don't open the email, they're still seeing my business name in their box. They have to go looking for my Facebook post. And I can follow, everybody asks me to follow Facebook pages. I, and again, don't take this wrong. <laughs> I will follow your Facebook page, but I won't engage with it. I, I, I don't have a cat. No offense, Allison. I don't have kids or grandkids, Lori. So I'm not really in the market for either one of those. You know, Graham, I'm going to go live overseas, but I don't have any actual moment right now. I don't have clients over there. Clint, I have a bookkeeper. So I think you're great. John, working with it. So do you see, I am not actually in the market for your product or service. So I will follow it, but I'm not going to engage with it. And that's what the algorithm is based on. Who engages with your Facebook page? That's how people see it. Email is a much more direct line of communication. So websites first, email is second, then social media before, and I would actually say before you do any of that, you're doing that demographic study. You're figuring out who is my target market. And if you're a startup or you're writing your business plan or rewriting it and you're like, well, I don't really know. I haven't worked with enough clients to really get that information. Then you theorize. Well, who do I think would benefit from my business? 
well, I think it's going to be this, 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 and this. And you do the same thing. You pretend they're your past clients and you write down all the information and then you figure out, oh my gosh, well, look at that. This is one thing I worked, I did this exercise with the client and she realized that every one of her favorite clients had cats. Every one of them. So she did it for like 10 because she couldn't pick. So she had 10 client names and she realized that 10 of her favorite 10 clients all had a, this was where it got interesting because they all had cats. They all had kids between the ages of six and like 12. There was a six, six year window and they all drove SUVs. So I said, okay, you need a six year old kid sitting in an SUV with a cat. That's your Facebook post. She's like, really? That's silly. And I'm like, try it. Oh my gosh. She got huge engagement on that. It was just, just I, it was crazy, but it worked. So now she can clearly communicate. So if you don't have the past clients, you do the best you can. You think, well, I got in the business to solve this problem. Who's going to benefit from me solving this particular problem? Then you go on. Okay. So I got some more questions here. Multiple types of customers. Does that answer your question, Lori? You were getting at publisher and books, right? Uh, no, I was actually getting at uh, customers that are buying gift books ah. for their grandkids or, or nieces and nephews or teachers um, or librarians, you know, that, oh, that are is interesting. buying it for, you know, a different, they're not buying gift books per se. Right. So you could do a couple of, you could, so you start with the umbrella. I have great books for kids. That's your message right there. I have great books for kids, <laughs> right? Under that umbrella, then you could say, I would actually say, if it was me, I would say something, are you a teacher looking to expand your library? Click here or put some words underneath that. Over here, I'd say, are you a parent or grandparent looking to gift, your, gift a child? And then I would put some copy underneath there. That's one way to look at it. So your main premise though is, I have great books to help kids. Okay, that's pretty clear. I understand exactly what it is you're selling. And then you, of course, have a buy now button. That's your clear call to action. Does that help? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, Allison, how does a startup best market themselves? My business is a year old. So, best market yourselves. Again, it always starts with the demographics. You have to know. So, obviously, your target market is people with cats. Okay. Right? You've been in business for a year. You've worked with some clients. I would do that client breakdown. I would look, if you've got 10 clients, 12, look at every one of them. Obviously they have cats, Hello. but then male, female, where do they live? South Lincoln, North Lincoln, what kind of cars do they drive? Do they have kids? You want to get as specific about them as you possibly can. Um, and for me, it's a huge indicator if they're South or North Lincoln, because there's a, unfortunately, there's a lot of stereotypes that can be driven from that information. Um, so find out, are they on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Instagram? I can guarantee they all have email. Guarantee it, because mm -hmm. everybody has email yeah. now, right? Yeah. So how do you reach them? So that would be the first thing I would do. I would go revisit your past client list and really try to draw down and very get very specific. I fought that for a very long time I, because I was like, well, that just is silly. But you know what? It works because you're speaking their language. Again, cat held it by a six-year-old an in an SUV. It was crazy, but it worked. That's insane. So it does work. Um, if one's image is outdated, how does one improve it? I work at a museum whose website is several years old and <laughs> looks it. Well, so let's talk about something else that a lot of people don't get. Perception is reality. Mm -hmm. My perception of whatever I think, you know, initial first impression or whatever, that's my reality. It's harder to overcome that. I look at a lot of websites and I can always tell, oh, this was made in the 80s. This isn't mobile friendly, which is a huge knock right now. This is not, oh, they're still, oh. So you do a couple of things. You're not doing a rebrand. I would suggest you take a serious look at it. Answer those three questions. What do I offer? How does it make my customer's life better? And what do they do to buy it? And you want them to come visit you. That's obviously your clear call to action for the, for the museum. And then how can you reframe the website? How do you take the website, whether it's from what you've got 
I just helped a client. She has a GoDaddy website. She uses a GoDaddy template, not knock and GoDaddy. For people who are not familiar with website and want to do it themselves, it's a great option. And they actually have human beings you can call and talk to if you don't understand it, which I think is huge. We use that template. We took the messaging that we created together and we put it, where does this need to go? What's the most important thing? Where does this, and we used it. So you can take what you've got and reapply it. I'm gonna strongly suggest, again, if you don't get the book, read the book, Building a Story Brand. He also has done a second one called Marketing Made Simple. Oh my gosh, life changing because it actually tells you what to do. This is what you need on your website. These are the questions you need to be asking. So Mark, just Google Donald Miller, Marketing Made Simple. I don't have any of those books to give away. I bought a case of these, but I'll get more of those later. Okay, so does that help a little bit? You have to update your website because it's a yeah. tough topic anyway. It's a, it's a tough sell. The Jewish, German, what did you call it? It's the German- American, the Germans from Russia. Germans from Russia. I have driven past that sign, I don't know how many times. Ask me how many times I've stopped. I'm embarrassed to say, Allison, I have never been there. <laughs> but I've seen it, so that's a start. But if I were to Google it, what would I see? Ooh, that's something a else. A dated website. <laughs> and that would be something else. So you're gonna update your website, but also be thinking about customer's journey, which I actually always kind of uh, eye roll that. But you have to know, how people get to you, how do they find you, what do they see when they find you. So put, your, put yourself in the shoes of a customer. What are they gonna see? Oh, they're gonna see an outdated website. Ooh, that's not good, they're not gonna stay. I can, I can practically guarantee, you got 10 seconds to hook them. Outdated website, they're gonna think it's an outdated museum. They're gonna think, oh, it's not interesting, a bunch of old fuddy-duddy, dusty, whatever. That perception is reality, right? So that's what I would say. Um, how does one revamp their business in the age of a pandemic, especially if customers were mostly in person? Ooh, good thing. Okay, so there's a museum, and I can never, I started following it. I think they're the Cowboy Museum in Oklahoma City or something, right? Something like that. Well, obviously they closed for the pandemic because, hello, it's an in-person thing. Nobody goes there. They gave their social media accounts to their security guy named Cowboy Tim, right? You're not thinking this is gonna be a great experience with a guy named Cowboy Tim taking over, and I don't remember what the museum was. He was, he was hilarious. He would go in at night and he'd take pictures of the exhibits and he'd say, yeah, and I don't remember exactly, so I'm making this one up, but it was like a picture, you know, it was a statue of Theodore Roosevelt. And he'd say, yeah, Teddy and I are having a conversation about the state of the pandemic. And he would post that. It was real. It was funny. He, you know, he's like, I'm just a regular guy. So I would say you could take pieces and say, did you know? That would be something I would do a lot of. Did you know um, Germans from Russia are different from Germans from Germany because, and I don't know. I mean, I'm, again, I'm making this up, right? So look at what you've got in the museum and how do you, you know, how do I make this interesting? How do I bring this to life? And then you're going to pique their interest. See, Chris, then you pique their interest. And when the pandemic is over, are they more comfortable getting out there? Like, you know, that German from Russia museum was pretty funny on pretty good. They were, let's go there on a Saturday afternoon because the big rush is going to be, I hope, how do we support our local businesses? How do we support our local nonprofits? How do we support, once the pandemic is over, God help us all, it will be soon, how, how do we support? And I think that's gonna be a big thing. So that's how you can start, start now by laying that groundwork. Chris. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm promoting the idea that the pandemic actually offers us an, a really interesting opportunity. And that, that opportunity starts with, um, in the past, we expected people to come to our museum or our business or something. During the pandemic, we don't have that opportunity right now. So the only way they can come is virtually. We're having these Southeast Community College uh, meetings virtually, okay? Now, people are getting used to that. We're getting good at it. 
we've learned how to share a screen on Zoom. We've learned how to, to do our email marketing better. We've learned how to, to do these kinds of things better. Guess what? That's not going to stop when businesses keep opening up the virtual side of things is going to continue to expand and the opportunity is that allows you to reach a worldwide audience if right so Chris, i'm gonna to have to stop we've got we're running out of time steve's giving me the high five sign so we're gonna to have to kind of to that was the point dial it down <laughs> So yes, so there is opportunity if you see it. And you said something about a digital footprint. And that kind of speaks to what Chris was saying. I, I actually try to tell people, don't look at this as, a, as a, a necessarily bad thing. Look at the pandemic as a way to look at your business new. Refresh your ideas. How do I continue to serve our businesses, my clients, my customers through this and beyond? And as Chris said, this is an opportunity to really reach a much wider audience. So um, I am going to write my email address in the chat. And I would love to continue this discussion. If anybody has questions, I got to make sure I'm just typing my own name right here. Um, please do not hesitate. Diane, DK Solutions, any? Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I'm here. I said I'm um, way too much there. So Oh, I do need to get a plug in. I am teaching a LinkedIn class for SCC on July 20th via Zoom. If you looked at your LinkedIn profile and thought, oh my goodness, I need some help. That's a great opportunity. And if you're not on LinkedIn or you're not using it, sign up for the LinkedIn Zoom class on July 20th. It is, it, it, will, it can rock your world. All right, so take it away, Stephen Brook. Oh, who won the book? Thank you so much, Diane. Okay, Brooke, are you going to do a drawing there? Or? Yep. So I've got everybody. Oh, wait. I got one more to add. And she's very fa fair and impartial. <laughs> and the winner is. Uh, I can't see it. John Radway, you are the winner. All right, John, I will get in touch with you and I'll get your address so I can mail it or maybe we could do a, a coffee. We'll figure something out. I'll be in touch. You're muted. Okay, the uh, one other, we need to pick one other winner. Uh, everybody hoist your coffee mugs up there. Let's see what you got and Diane's gonna be the judge, so. <laughs> Okay, so I got to put my glasses on. KZUM. Oh, I like that, John, but you won already, so you're out. <laughs> Greg, I like the come and go. The, Lori, that's got to be mine. I, I have one very similar to that. I'm going to give that one to Lori. Okay. Lori is the winner of a Focus Suite and Perk Up Thursday coffee mug. Uh, these things are incredibly valuable. They're worth their <laughs> weight in gold, so... You should be very happy, and you'll have to probably declare it on your income tax this year. <laughs> okay. Th Diane, thank you. I said let's, let's have coffee. So. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for attending this week's Perk Up Thursday Coffee. Just a reminder that next week we have Jill Jacobs with Jill Jacobs Bookkeeping. Uh, Jill has tons of enthusiasm, and, and she will uh, be a great way to end our coffee series for the month. So uh, join us. Remember to keep your eyes on our social media and your email box for July. We have a lot of fun things planned. And we're going to leave this room open for a few minutes. So if you want to hang around and talk to some of the other participants, uh, feel free to do so. But that concludes our coffee for the week. And again, thank you to Diane Siefkes with DK Solutions for being our speaker today. Again, hang around if you want. Uh, and we will take everybody off mute if you want to talk to one another. Thanks again. Oh, thanks, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity. I, this is where I get my energy. So you guys got me going for the whole rest of the day. Heaven help us all. All right. Thanks, Diane. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Chris. You and I are going to do coffee. So shoot me an email, will you? I'll do that right now. Perfect. <laughs>